Habari Zainu, Karibu Sana, welcome back to Why in the Morning. You have been watching us so far. And I know that we had a nice little short intro before, but that's because we've got wonderful stuff planned for you guys. And right now, this particular segment is for the health segment. It's called Health on Monday, and it's with me, Joy Mochache. And you can uh, find me and talk to me on specific platforms. That's Joy underscore Mochache. But if you would like to interact concerning this health segment and ask some questions, because the topic for today is very interesting, especially if you're a lady or even if you're married or you're about to have a child, for example, please interact with us going by hashtag why in the morning and hashtag help on Monday and then go to our social media platforms. That's on Twitter and Facebook, Y254 channel, and then on Instagram, Y254 underscore channel, and then ask whatever you'd like to ask or comment whatever you'd like to comment. And right now, I've got a wonderful nutritionist who's on set with us today. And not only that, he is well-versed in certain area that we're going to be discussing. But before I introduce him, I'd like to introduce the topic. Now, as we had mentioned in the introduction before, I had said that in the next couple of days, we're going to be studying the month of August. And the month of August, from the 1st of August to 7th of August, is going to be Breast Feeding Awareness Week, where we focus on bringing awareness and advocacy uh, when it comes to breastfeeding and also assisting mothers who have difficulty in that area. And so that's why we, find, we found this a perfect moment to be discussing um, breast nutrition, uh, child nutrition, and mother nutrition. So Karibu Nisana, help me welcome my guest. Mr. Nahashan, please tell us where you're working and also let us know exactly what you'd like us to refer you as. Thank you, Joy. Yes. My name is Mochuka Nahashan, uh -huh. Maribi. Uh -huh. I'm a nutritionist. Nutritionist. I work in the Ministry of Health, okay. based in M County. Okay. And I'm very pleased to be with you today. Okay. To discuss this issue of breastfeeding. Yes. You know, we have so many mothers mm -hmm. who actually don't know even how to breastfeed, or they don't know the importance of this breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. We have also potential mothers who are coming, and they would like to know the importance of breastfeeding and what are the difficulties and what they need about breastfeeding. I see, I see. And um, maybe before we, we can start, how long have you been working in this particular field so that our people know that they're in good hands, so that our people know that whatever information that they're getting today is great information coming from someone who knows exactly what he's saying? Okay, I've been working for around eight years. Eight I, years is a long time. I started time. working in 2011. 2011, June. wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. So um, I know you're well versed in this area. Yes. Okay. And um, before we start, what exactly does a nutritionist tend to cover? What, what areas do you tend to focus on, on a day-to-day -day basis? On a day-to-day -day, -day basis as a nutritionist, what we do in the hospital first is the clinical management. Okay. Clinical management is where you manage the conditions in relation to food that you are supposed to eat. Okay. For example, we have conditions like diabetes, we have conditions like we have liver conditions, mm -hmm. all that we, we, we manage them mm -hmm. in collaboration with the doctors as they manage the, the medical part, we do the nutrition part of it. As they manage the medical part, you manage the nutritional part of it. Yes, but you work as a team. You work as a team. You can't work alone. So it is that important? Yes. All right, I understand. And um, you know, when it comes to nutrition and breastfeeding, yes. I'm thinking there's a link. Yes. There must be a link. Yes. What is the link between breastfeeding and nutrition? Let's start there. Okay. Breastfeeding, first of all, is the nutrition of the infant. Okay. Because if you look at the, uh, or oh, I can put it like this, eh? breast milk, it's actually the food for the baby. Yes. And it is the ideal food mm -hmm. that is provides growth and development for the infants. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have the policy, MIYCN, the Maternal Infant and Young Child Nutrition, mm -hmm. that actually recommends that all children above, below six months, mm -hmm. they should be breastfed exclusively. What do I mean by exclusive breastfeeding? Mm. Exclus exclusive breastfeeding, this is where you feed the baby on breast milk alone mm -hmm. without giving water, without giving any food. Uh -huh. Unless it is a drug that has been recommended by a practitioner. Mm. 
Right. And this breastfeeding alone without any water, without anything else, no juices, no uh, this famous uji yes. and all the things we like to say, a nutrition, uh, a nutrition, it's a nutrition, uh, a nutritionist, excuse me. Is there a period of time in which you have to do this? Come again? The period of time in which the mother has to do this, where she does exclusive breastfeeding. What is the period of time where she has to do exclusive breastfeeding? Exclusive Before she introduces maybe things like water. Exclusive breastfeeding should be done from the day of birth yeah. until the baby reaches six months. Six months. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I see. And, um, you know, there was an interesting, uh, as I was doing my research yesterday, there's an interesting incident I came across where a man was talking about uh, his mother being able to tell the difference between the children. There are six of them. There are six children. Three boys. Uh, actually, all, all of them are boys. But three boys have been breastfed, and the other three boys were not breastfed. Yes. Yes, but the mother can tell the difference. Now that they're all grown up, this mother can tell the difference in all of them. Yes. The ones who've been breastfed and the ones who've been not breastfed. So what are some of the differences when it comes to, now that we've seen the importance of breastfeeding in, this, um, in, the, in the period of time, what are some of the differences that happens when children are not breastfed and when children are breastfed? Yes, you will see that difference. A keen mother will definitely see the difference between the, those children whom she has breastfed mm -hmm. and those who are not breastfed. Because breastfeed itself, the milk, mm -hmm. provides growth and development for these young ones. Eh? Mm -hmm. And by, that, by doing that, they prevent stunting. And stunting is where your, your height does not match with the, the age. So definitely by the time the child grows, you'll be able to tell this child is not to the normal height. I see. Simply because the, the, the child did not breastfeed exclusively for six months. Mm. That's one. Mm. Also, the research has shown that those infants who have been exclusively breastfed, they actually have high IQ than those who are not breastfed. That means is that, that, they, right? they, that, means that really? the performance in school mm -hmm. is different. Okay. Those are some of the signs of telling those children who are exclusively breastfed and those who are not mm. exclusively breastfed. Yes, I see. And so it's as if this was just, it was something that was planned to be the way, um, you know, okay, I know that some of our viewers are not believers, you know, some, not everyone is a creationist, some people are evolutionists, but yes. if you're creationist and you do believe that God created um, this wonderful, wonderful mechanism between mother and child, this wonderful way to create a bond and a connection. And first of all, people like to say, oh, you know, then that bond is also in the umbilical cord, you know, uh, because the child has been bonded through the umbilical cord, mm -hmm. even though it's cut, that, that means, you know, that bond between the mother and the child never dies, and that's why a child is always stronger with the, uh, with the mother. This could also be true. But I also believe that there's a bond between breastfeeding. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, and maybe if you can give some expertise and shed some light about that. Yeah. The more you breastfed your child, the more you create that bond. This is the time that you, you come together with your child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have that love, the relationship yes. Yes. when you're breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. That's why when you're breastfeeding, the, the child is just near your tummy. That's mm -hmm. tummy to tummy. You are creating that bond. Mm -hmm. When you're breastfeeding, you are creating that bond. Right. When you're sleeping closer to the baby during the night, you are creating that board mm -hmm. to that between you and that child. I see. And then until that board will not disappear even when that child grows. Mm. So you find that child is near the mother of this. Always. That's true. Mm. And uh, now that we've talked about uh, the basics of breastfeeding, I yes. want us to jump, about, jump into the nutrition of breastfeeding and then we'll jump into the awareness of breastfeeding week. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to nutrition of breastfeeding, what, can, what are the, some of the things mothers can eat to, to uh, how can I say, assist in the mm. production of mm -hmm. lactation and yes. the production of breast milk. Yes, definitely if the mother does not feed well, the production of milk will go down. Okay. And they are supposed to feed extra milk compared to the normal mothers. Ah. Where we have, like for example, a mother will feed, the normal mother will feed three meals plus extra snacks. But this lactating mother will feed three meals 
plus another two meals and two snacks. <laughs> this is to provide enough nutrient mm. for the mother to be mm. able to produce more milk. Mm. In addition to that, we have ready foods. Mm -hmm. So they should take food foods and also warm food so that they can enhance production of milk. Mm -hmm. However, these are how the breastfeeding works. Maybe I can give a bit of anatomy of a breast so, sure, sure. so that you can be I able wish, to understand. I wish we actually even had one of those boards <laughs> with the anatomy of the breast, but that we'd, for that Next we don't. Time. But, but now we can hear it from you. Yes. When you look at the breast, we have the nipple. Yes. And around the nipple, we have a blackish thing. It is called areola. Areola. Yes. Beneath that one, we have, what we have a gland that produces oil, fluids, that mm -hmm. moisturizes that breast, uh -huh. that, that keeps that breast moisturized. Yes, yes. Inside the breast, we have what we call haphiole. These are small sacs. Haphiole. Yes. Wow. Actually, there are millions of them in the breast. Wow. <laughs> and they are made of milk secreting cells. Okay. And then around those areoli, we have what we call muscle cells. These muscle cells are the ones that will squeeze out the milk from these sacs. Mm. We do have the small duct also mm -hmm. that stores the milk in between the meals. And we have lunch ducts that direct to let the milk flow out. Mm -hmm. But now we have two hormones that are involved in this process of breastfeeding. And this is prolactin mm -hmm. and oxytocin. And that's why you find most of health workers... Prolactin and oxytocin? Yes. That's why you find most of health workers telling the mothers the milk does not come from the breast. The milk comes from the brain. Why? Oh. Because prolactin, it is produced from the brain. When the baby suckles the, the breast, the nipple, mm -hmm. a sensory impulse is sent to the lower part of the brain mm -hmm. at the pituitary gland. And then it senses and produces prolactin. Mm -hmm. Then prolactin moves down through the blood to the breast and it stimulates the milk secreting cells, the one that we have said here in the areoli, to produce what? Milk. Right. Now the milk has been produced. We have now the other hormone that we are calling oxytocin. Mm -hmm. This hormone is the one that will let the milk flow out. Mm -hmm. The same process will happen. When the baby suckles, the signal is sent to the lower part of the brain, that is the pituitary gland. Mm -hmm. Then the oxytoc oxytocin is produced mm -hmm. down the blood to the, the breast. Mm -hmm. And now it comes now to the muscle cells and it is it, it helps now in the flowing of the milk. Here comes now when you hear mother saying that, you know what, I can't produce what? Milk. It is not that that mother cannot produce milk. <coughs> it is because that process now, the oxytocin is, is not done what? It's not produced. We have talked of prolactin. Prolactin can stay in the breast for around 30 minutes after, after breastfeeding. Now this one will en enable the breast to make the milk for the next, for the next feed. I see. Yes. I see. So that's what enables the milk for the next feed. And yes. this sounds like it's a, it's a whole process that must happen, which means that um, not only is, it, is this milk important for the child, that there are ways that this milk can actually protect reducing infections in the child. Yes. May you please touch on that because I'm, I'm baffled as to how that may work. Okay. When now, when the baby suckles the mother, gets the milk, actually the first milk of the mother, the colostrum, that's the first milk. It is a yellowish, thick, clear fluid. Yeah. When the baby suckles that milk mm -hmm. in the first few days mm -hmm. after birth, this milk helps the baby in very many ways. Mm. One, it has antibodies and white brown cells. This they help in protection against any infection that may come, especially the allergies and intolerance of, and also respiratory 
diseases or infections mm -hmm. for the baby. Mm -hmm. Then we have, it, it has a growth factor. It ensures that the intestine of this young one, mm -hmm. they do what? They mature. Because remember, they are not mature. I see. Then it is rich in vitamin A. Mm -hmm. And vitamin A helps now in, in reducing the severity of any infection that the baby may come. Okay. And that's why now it is said that actually colostrum is the first immunization that is given to the baby by the mother. Right. To prevent any infection that may come later. I see. That's, that's wonderful information. And you know, um, everything that you've said is, is all that we wanted to discuss and cover, particularly when it comes to breastfeeding, the nutrition part of it, and also the importance of it and how it protects the child. There is, however, um, a need to also cover a Breast Awareness Week. <coughs> and I shall be giving a little bit of information and maybe I can ask a little bit of questions pertaining to what we can do when it comes to Kenya and improving some of the systems we have put in place for mothers who are breastfeeding. 